We have Dr. Pena right now, Dr. Jennifer Pena. She's a former White House Medical Unit physician for President Obama, also uh, for former Vice President uh, Joe Biden and for current Vice President uh, Pence. And Dr. Pena, thank you so much for making the time just uh, to join us today. When we talk about the escalating number of cases, not only here in the U.S., but worldwide, uh, what's your take on the situation at this point? Yes, thank you for having me. Uh, so basically, the issue right now is that we're not really adhering to social distancing uh, recommendations and mandates pretty much across the world. Here in the U.S., uh, we, we're pushing as providers to really recommend to patients to stay home as much as possible. I'm part of a bipartisan group of providers and medical professionals that have uh, coalesced to deliver this message as strongly as possible, not only to our communities, but also to our government officials, both local and at a federal level to try to encourage and recommend social distancing to try to prevent, again, further propagation of this virus. Dr. Pena, and in terms of the steps that the Trump administration has taken so far, they've announced, uh, they've been discussing different policy measures. From your perspective as someone in the medical field, what do you think needs to be addressed first? Yes, again, I can't emphasize enough, the social distancing has to be done yesterday. We're behind the curve. We started late. It happened in Italy as well. And I think we need to learn uh, from what uh, China did. We need to learn from what Japan did and some of these other countries. Uh, they enacted a very, very strong uh, social distancing uh, and isolation uh, mandates that really were the key to try to flatten that curve and prevent further uh, spread of the virus. Uh, I think the government really needs to learn from those lessons and start acting and acting fast. Uh, doctor, I have a quick question on um, the, the capacity issues. During the press conference today, we heard the president talk about sort of mobilizing these industries, whether it is a company like GM or Honeywell or 3M, to, to start producing some of these masks. As I understand it right now, a lot of these hospitals are working with very limited capacity. They're reusing some of the masks that have already been used. Uh, can you help us understand how that complicates the overall picture at a time when a lot of these hospitals hospitals are already overrun. Absolutely. I think it's a two-part issue. Uh, personal protective equipment as well as equipment that is needed for critically ill patients, uh, say ventilators and other uh, equipment that supports people who are ventilated. There's a national shortage of that. And so that's one problem. But the other problem is also infrastructure. We just don't have the capacity to accommodate the expected number of people that are going to require this kind of critical care deploying ships like the Comfort uh, and other Navy ships to accommodate some of these non-COVID patients is a good start. But even those platforms will be overwhelmed. I'm familiar with the Comfort and its capacities as having been in the military for 14 and a half years. And I know that again, that just scratches the surface. So we have to encourage, the government should encourage things like what's happening in Seattle where fields of sports fields are getting utilized to set up pop-up hospitals uh, in tents and other such facilities to improve the infrastructure capacity as well. So yes, definitely the equipment, the personal protective equipment and the critical care equipment is important, but we have to also emphasize infrastructure and capacity uh, as well. Dr. Pena, uh, this is Dan Halley. I just have a quick question as far as what we can expect uh, going forward. We're talking about the capacity for the U.S. Uh, as far as infrastructure goes uh, in treating patients as well as standard medical care that we're going to continue to see. Worst case scenario, what are we looking at here going forward? And you know, that's an excellent question and a hard one to answer. The numbers change so rapidly when it comes to how many new cases and the incidence and prevalence of this disease that it's hard to estimate. But if we look at the numbers of what's happening in Italy and some of other countries that are going through similar situations, we have to expect the worst. We should expect that these numbers will continue to double and triple at a very fast rate. And so again, infrastructure, but again, also encouraging private industry to contribute. Uh, I just realized recently that LVMH that conglomerate that owns uh, Louis Vuitton and some of these other companies have turned their manufacturing uh, factories into production of hand sanitizer. There are some uh, companies here in the United States, distilleries out of Minnesota, that have also turned their production facilities into uh, the ability to produce things like hand sanitizer, et cetera. And so I think the government needs to do its job, but we also should incentivize private industry to pitch in. We all It's all hands on deck kind of crisis time and everybody needs to contribute. 
And I also want to talk about what's happening in New York. So Governor Cuomo is now going to put in place this shelter at home for New Yorkers. But the numbers just keep skyrocketing. It's over 7,000. Now, you mentioned earlier that you believe that the reason why we're seeing these numbers go up is because people aren't abiding by the guidelines. They're not really social distancing. So how do you combat something like that in a city like New York, where people are just used to going out to do everything on their own? Absolutely. And again, excellent question. I'm sure uh, a lot of you have also seen the news of spring breakers out on the beach, uh, not really abiding by these uh, recommendations to social distance. And so I think it's going to have to be a much more aggressive stance. If it requires National Guard to become involved, we might need to do that. Uh, if we can't do it on our own, then we're going to have to really put down some serious rules and mandates so that people understand the severity of the issue. Uh, if it, it might be a curfew, it, it might be, uh, you know, something even more aggressive. But at this point, if we're not able to do it on our own, then we might need to have law enforcement assist with keeping people at home so that we can keep people safe. Dr. Pena, we really appreciated you taking the time to join us. Lots of great information there. We hope to have you back. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.